بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد as it is said lying is bad enough what to say about lying to oneself self deception where a person doesn't realize that they are putting themselves to their own detriment so generally people console themselves in the name of consolation but it is just really lying it is faking and it is a more for complex form of deception so these psychological forces inherently we acknowledge so called truth about ourselves so a person gets caught up in this self deception where we deceive ourselves unconsciously and this is generally to boost self esteem to to feel better to evolve so the brain harbors this conflicting thoughts this conflict in beliefs and uh, we actually fool others to our own advantage so for some people it is a tendency that is inborn it is a, a a trait that is inherent it is a personality trait and uh, one is praiseworthy the other one is destructive so the first one which is not lies but it is a belief system and that's the belief system of deen where a person believes something but that belief is based on another belief so that's why we can attest and accept this one here anna inda dhanni abdi bi a person has hope in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has hope in the qudrat of allah he has hope in the power of allah he has hope in the khazana and the treasures of allah so although he doesn't have it and he doesn't have any potential but his strength is based on the strength of rabbul alamin alhamdulillah rabbil alamin huwa al awwal huwa al akhir huwa al zahir huwa al batin ar rahman ar rahim al malik al quddus as salam al mu'min al muhaimin al aziz al jabbar al mutakabbir one one sifat of allah is his strength because he is believing in the qudrat and the power of allah and the second one which is destructive is where a person relies on themselves only and they remove allah from the equation so a person inflates his skill his 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 intelligence his intellect his his beauty his his attractiveness so but the whole world thrives around this deception it uh, proliferates and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger that's why you said beautifully objects in profile pictures are not as pretty as they appear objects in profile pictures are not as pretty as they appear so even a simple image which a person does of themselves they manipulate it it's not the real person besides the makeup and the, the everything else that goes with it but it is all about a show and that's why it is said it is amazing how complete is the delusion that beauty equals goodness it is amazing how complete is the delusion that beauty equals goodness so we link beauty to success we link beauty to to the ultimate criteria willing beauty to to one who has got it all so this deception we need to come out of this deception that's why he said man is not what he thinks he is it is what he hides man is not what he thinks he is it is what he hides so what we are hiding what we show in to people is one thing but the thing that we hide in from people is our actual reality So if a person introspect every time they do this deed every time they put a post every time 
they promote something. What are you hiding? And that's what he said. Sometimes the prettiest smiles hide the deepest secrets. The prettiest eyes have cried the most tears. And the prettiest of faces have felt the most pain. So this deception is 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 on on the next level where a person doesn't even know have a clue that they are in this deception. And a person gets caught up so much that he loses his focus for Akhirah. He loses the real value of life, the real purpose of life, because he is inviting to himself. That's why Abu Hazim used to say, اشتدد مؤونة الدنيا والآخرة The burden to procure dunya and akhirat, both are difficult. What's the difficulty with regards to akhirat? فَأَمَّا مَؤُونَةُ الْآخِرَةِ فَإِنَّكَ لَا تَجِدُ عَلَيْهَا أَعْوَانَا As for akhirat, there's very few people who are ready to boost you, to promote this concept of the year after, to hold your hand and take you to Jannatul Firdaus. وَأَمَّا مَعُونَةُ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّكَ لَا تَضْرِبْ بِيَدِكَ إِلَىٰ شَيْءٍ مِّنْهَا إِلَّا وَجَدْتَ فَاجِرًا قَدْ سَبَكَكَ إِلَيْهِ With regards to dunya, you put your hand anyway on dunya, except you will find a transgressor, a fajir, a sinner, and he surpassed you, he excelled you. Before you touch it, you just started a deal. You just considering open up a business. Somebody opened up the same business. Information leaked out. Your friend, you told me you want to do something. Tomorrow you find out he started that business. So the dunya in itself is deceptive and deception lies there. And for akhirat, we can't find the sincere ones. Abu Huraira used to say, الدنيا موقوفة بين السماء والأرض this dunya is suspended between the earth and the heavens. Tunadi Rabbuha Mundu Khalaqaha ila yawmi yafniha It is it's crying, it's, it is proclaiming, it is uh, screaming out, Ya Rabbi, lima tubughilni Why do you despise me? Why am I so hated? So it will be told to dunya, Uskuti ya la shay, Uskuti ya la shay. Oh, you worthless commodity. Keep quiet. Remain silent. You are worthless. So, dunya is worthless. The components are worthless. We are worthless. We become valuable when it is attached to deen. Dunya becomes valuable when it is attached to deen. That horse, its excreta, excreta is valuable when it is used in the path of Allah. That car, the fuel that is burned, the smoke, the carbon dioxide is valuable when it is used in the path of Allah. And the Swarovski stones and the branded labels are worthless if it is not used for the deen of Allah and used contrary to that. As Abdullah ibn Mubarak used to say, حب الدنيا والذنوب في القلب قد إح توشته That this love of dunya and this love for guna and sins and disobedience, loving yourself, loving your objectives, loving your priority, has, has made this heart lose all its power, its potential. It's, this dunya has controlled your heart, now it's pulling the strings. And it has removed all chapter of, uh, chapters of goodness. When will good ever come to you? When will any benefit come to you? You are caught up in, 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 in collecting and amassing dunya, promoting your dunya, promoting yourself, promoting your accolades, promoting accolades that you don't have. Wabi Nama Wal Nabiya used to say, Man fariha qalbuhu bi shayin min ad-dunya faqad akhta al-hikma Whoever's heart has become elated with the acquiring of dunya has compromised the blessings of wisdom and hikma in understanding the reality of life. So we generally, somebody counts money, he gets happy, his iman is decreasing. Baqawul Mawla Yishmul Ali the ulama when he took out money should turn the faces downside. They didn't want to see taswir. So in the coming of dunya we elated and in the, in the uh, departing of dunya we depressed. In, in, in practicing on deen are we happy? 
on our accomplishments in in Muslim Tadbir or Safi or our Tilawat Ishraq Tahajjud Chast Woman Jaala Shahwata or Tahta Qadamayi Whoever puts this desires and now starts controlling his desires then Faraka Shaitan Min Dhillihi Shaitan disperses, Shaitan disappears quickly from him. So taking this nafs and crushing it. وَمَنْ غَلَبَ عِلْمُهُ هَوَاهُ فَذَلِكَ الْعَالِمَ الْغَالِبُ And whoever's hawa, his ambitions, his desires, control his knowledge, then that is a scholar that has been overpowered. A scholar that has been overpowered. So dunya itself is deceptive and we get caught up in this deception and then we want to promote our our own so-called achievements. So a person by, by nature says, hey, you know what, I'm good, I want goodness for humanity. But when it comes to the crunch and we all fail, they say a, a, a youngster went for an interview for a, a signalman's job at the railway station. The inspector asked him, what would you do if you realized that two trains were heading towards each other on the same track. So he said confidently, I'd switch the points from one of the trains to the other. Then he asked again, but what would you do if the lever was broken? So he replied, I would rush down from the signal box and use the manual lever. So he was asked, what if the manual lever had been struck by lightning? So he said, I'll phone the next signal box. What if it's engaged? I'll use the emergency phone at the level crossing. And if what? That emergency phone was vandalized. Then he said, in that case, I'd run to the village and fetch my uncle. The inspector asked him, what's your uncle got to do with the whole equation? What's he got to do with that? So the youngster replied, my uncle's never seen a train crash. We've never taken selfies of a train crashing together. So an opportunity. So by default, even in moments of destruction, we want to show we were there. We want to show it's happening. This is the, this is the place. This is the time. So when it comes to, to others as well, we perfect, everybody else full of flaws. Doesn't matter how, what, when, I am perfect, I'm Mr. So-and-so. And everybody else, they full of flaws. So they say a, a person once, he wanted to reform, he went to a monastery. So they said that every five years you can utter two words, you have to make some mujahada sacrifice. So after five years, they asked him, what do you want to say? He said, bed hard. So I was told, we'll look into it. Five years later came again, they asked him ending to say, he said, food cold. Because we weren't allowed to say two words. So they said, we'll look into it. After five years again, they asked him, what do you have to say? He said, I quit. I quit. So the, the person in charge said, I'm hardly surprised that you are quitting. All you have done for the last 15 years is you complain. The last 15 years, the only thing that you do is complain. So we we very, very particular about looking at other people's faults, but our own faults, then we confident, we overconfident. We think so, we got it under control, we know how to manage it properly. So there was a salesman who used to go door to door to sell vacuum cleaners and uh, he was frustrated, he never sold anything that day, nobody let him in. So he said, the next house I'm going, I'm going to do my demo. So he rang the bell, somebody opened, he just rushed in. He didn't say a word and he, he dr dropped a, a, a bucket of horse manure on the lounge carpet. So, and he screamed out, he said, sir, if this vacuum cleaner doesn't do wonders in cleaning this manure, I'll eat everything, I'll eat every chunk of it. So the person there was very shocked and uh, surprised. So they said, uh, do you want ketchup on that? Do you want tomato sauce? So the salesman now was even more shocked. What do you mean? What are you talking about? 
So the man replied, we just moved in. We don't have any electricity yet. We just moved in. We don't have any electricity yet. So sometimes a person is overconfident. The lies, the, the, the deception that we believe that we can achieve takes its toll. It takes its consequences. But this is a simple example. Worse than that is a person who loses akhirah. So we have to see see in the light of Quran and Hadith, look at the vision of Allah and His Rasul. We're always looking at our vision, at our opinion, at what I think, what I say, what I presume. But that is a great deception. They say there were two students quarreling, so the teacher seen them, said, what's wrong? So he's not listening to me. Why should I listen to him? So they didn't want to listen to each other. So the teacher called him and said, you know what? Come to the table, took out a board, placed it there and said, okay, what's the color of this? So the first one said white, the other one said black, they started arguing again. Then the teacher told them to change places, so they changed places, then they changed it. The one said now it's black, the other one said it's white, but they were surprised, they were both right. So the teacher said, see, let me show you the ball and switched it. That it had two colors, so it seemed like it was one color, but it had two colors on either side. So you have to look at life from a different angle sometimes. It's white, we're supposed to be deen, it's looking deen, but we see in the black, the darkness, and we get caught in this darkness, and through this dark eye, we see life, we see evil, we see ma'asiyat, and uh, the circumstances deteriorate, and eventually a person passes away with this deception. So the researchers have, 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 have gone into deep of why do people deceive themselves? So people generally tend to inflate their, their skill, their intelligence, their attractiveness. They manipulate the situation, they manipulate the variables to, to promise themselves. They get this reward, they get this adrenaline, they get this dopamine, this, uh, this thrill. So it is, it is a form of cheating, it is a form of, of, of deception. So. That's why researchers did a study and they, they took two group of women. One was shown uh, 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 scenes of, of nikah, marriage. They were given a, a book to read of marriage and romance. And uh, the other group was shown buildings and architecture. So the women who read about marriage were asked to sketch themselves on a brown paper. So they were supposed to trace, stand on the brown paper and trace their body shape. They cheated and they showed narrower, more slimmer drawings. Why? They wanted to block out any negative information. But the women who read about buildings and architecture never cheated at all. So, when a person has a certain perception, so when we are Sibratullah, drowning in the color of Allah, then we see Allah in everything. So they say, researchers say that from the age of three children, they have a thing called positivity bias. This is a tendency where a child considers himself very smart, whether he's got the ability or not, but he would exaggerate, he would show a positive trait and image uh, in front of an audience. So from the age of three, so we always want to be right, we believe we're right, no matter how wrong we are, we still believe we're right. We prove to others that we are right. We hide our flaws, we promote our traits, we promote our uh, our so-called skills, the skills we don't even have, and uh, we promote it. So, this uh, fooling is our fooling ourselves. So, somebody has a, we, they call it the inner eye, where you believe that you are more successful, more attractive, and that's through social media, posting, selfies, etc., which has uh, exacerbated the problem. So there are four categories of people, somebody who has nothing to show, but they put on a show. They have nothing, but they put on a show. This is the biggest deception. Why does a person wear a, a fake branded product manufactured by a fake company to make people think so that they are genuine? So, and this is what many, th the world, the industries thrive on. Whether it's genuine or fake, industries thrive on this year. The, the, the fake market is imitation markets, is replicas, is, 
There's, there's a whole industry, whether it's sunglasses, bags, t-shirts, shoes, literally everything you can dream about, from, from uh, bags that you'll find on the catwalks of, of Paris and London, to the Rolexes of the world, you'll find a copy, you'll find an imitation. In some countries, you'll get an entire building, an old market for this uh, imitation. Sometimes these copiers, these uh, counterfeit manufacturers, they make the copy look better than the original. And sometimes even the quality is better. So when you go to some markets, you can choose grade A, B, C, D, E. If you pay premium, you can get something that, that lasts even better than the original. So, so the brand is fake. This person is using a fake, right? The person who is following is fake. Everything in the system is fake. Allah and his Rasul is genuine. But what a big world of deception. Uh, number two is a person who has everything to show. He sets a standard for show. And uh, he's got the glitter, he's got the gamma, he's got everything else. And he wants to show the world. He's also in a deception. He shows the world. I've got the best home, best car, best wife, best life, best everything, best friends. But he's most unhappy. And the third person is a person who has everything, but he doesn't show nothing. So Takabur Kuta Shakur say he's grateful to Allah for all the bounties. He doesn't show low profile undercover. That's the ideal. That's a person a pai mushakir is sabir. Like a person who's fasting, and a person who's eating and grateful. He gets all the reward. In the last category is a person who doesn't have anything and he doesn't show off. So we have to check ourselves and see that we are not caught in the strap. The amal for today is a dunya malunatun wa malunun mafia illa dik wahi wa mawalahu wa alim aw mutalim. The dhikr of Allah, what helps it, the alim, the scholar of deen, and what's close to that? To uh, connect ourselves to the ulama, the mashayikh, and uh, link ourselves to them. May Allah give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.